Hi guys, welcome to POV, you're my therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not get paid. No, you don't. This is your civic duty, your civic duty to listen to me complain. And baby, do I have some complaining to do okay this is this is POV my therapist this is what it is this is who we are this is what we do girl so um the look this is the look today's look is extra glittery extra crazy extra just pretty just because I deserve it okay it's my birthday today's my 27th birthday um and I, you know, I'm not in the best mood. Is anybody ever in the best mood? Is anybody ever in the best mood around their birthdays or not? And if you are, you're a fucking weirdo, okay? But um, today I'm just, I have a lot of feelings. And baby, we're going to talk about those feelings, okay? Um, but yeah, so today's my 27th birthday. So I did a little extra glam, like... I'm wearing the crazy eyelashes. I'm wearing the long eyelashes. Like, I can feel this shit touch my eyebrows, bitch. Like, you know, I got the extra glittery on. Like, I just, it's just extra. Like, it's giving. It's giving. I look really beautiful. Like, she's that girl. So, period. Um, Wow, you guys. So, I don't know if you remember, but last episode, I told you guys that I was going to go to New York for my birthday. And look, I, as the trip got closer and closer, like, I just had, like, this, y'all, I be telling y'all that my intuition is strong, she is strong, and, like, I think I told everybody in my life that I talked to on a daily basis, at least once before this trip, that I think I should, I should cancel the trip, like, down to when I was getting in the car, I was like, I think I should cancel the trip, and I kept saying that, but, like, I was trying to talk myself out of it or I was I was really hoping I think deep down I was hoping somebody would be like yeah you know what if you really feel like that you should cancel nobody did that and I blame you all for the what's what's about to happen now um I have never had an experience where from the moment it began to the moment it ended it was just not giving there were beautiful moments in between I will give you that but everything was just really just well written the universe took her time she took her time fucking my shit up okay just so you know she took her time she planned this out this is not a a series of unfortunate events baby unfortunate implies that there is no thought that there is there is randomness there is just this and that no this was a concise takedown (laughs) okay and right now I don't see what the point of it was. I don't see what the point of my suffering was and my irritation and my tears. But one day, I know I will look back at this moment and I will say, wow, that was really for the better. That day, however, is not today, bitch. (laughs) That day is not today. It's not today, okay? Listen, you guys. So, I, I'm trying to decide, do I tell you linearly everything that happened or what? But anyway, so it is my birthday. And if you feel like donating to the POV My Therapist Fund, um, the link is in the bio. The link is in the bio. Um, also, I have merch coming up. Very exciting about that. So I have merch coming up. Um, I want to tell a lie and say that my website's going to be up and, you know, go write your name Go write your email in a newsletter so that you can um, so you can be the first to know when merch is out. Um, I want to tell you that lie, but I don't know if I'm going to have that ready by then. Just because, like, I'm sorry. I know that, like, everything is about organization and this and that. But, baby, listen, I'm just having a rough time, okay? I, I'm i trying to uphold myself to a standard and I feel like the most of a standard that I can hold myself up to right now is being beautiful and going to work. Everything else is just a little bit extra, but I'm gonna, I need to get that done. I really need to get that done. That was one of my priorities these last couple days that I did not get done. So here, um, I'm actually, uh, not actually, anyways, the merch is coming out. 
soon, okay? The pictures have been took. The pictures have been taken. Um, that was something that got done during this trip that I'm very happy that it got done because, bitch, if it didn't get done during this trip, I think I honestly would have had, like, a meltdown. But that got done, so I was very happy about that. Um, I am so over my birthday this year that today is my birthday. I don't have, do I have a cake? No, um, I don't. I'm cutting the cake this weekend when my sister comes and, um, I just don't care anymore. I really don't care. There's a lot of things right now that I'm feeling that I just don't care. I feel like the most I want to do to celebrate this birthday is forget this weekend, allow myself the privilege of forgetting this weekend. Um, and also, creating a mood board because I am feeling like there is a power in creating a mood board because something that was on my mood board two years ago happened and like and it's real like I had the meeting and everything and it's great and I'm excited and and I feel like there's a lot of power in that so I'm actually gonna look at my mood board again um it's in here somewhere but I'm gonna look at it again because I want to see what else I had on there you know let's see what else is gonna happen in 2023 you know time is a concept it does not work linearly so the time that I exist in and the time that the universe exists in is completely different because clearly my my 2021 is the universe's 2022 so let's see what the fuck else is on this bitch that's about to happen all right um but so talking about my trip and just getting that out of the way y'all I knew that this trip was not I knew that something I knew some fuckery was gonna happen when already like going into this trip I, I really wanted to cancel. I don't know why, but I wanted to cancel. It wasn't a gut feeling. It was a want. So for me, the difference between a gut feeling is like, oh, no, I need to do this. Oh, shit. My friend's calling me. Hold on. Um, There's a difference between a gut feeling and a want. Like for me, it was a very big want that I wanted to cancel that I wanted to cancel the trip. Um, But it wasn't a gut feeling that, oh shit, I should cancel this trip. Because if it was a gut feeling, I would have canceled that bitch, okay? Um, And gut feelings for me are like, are are life or death, okay? So if it was a gut feeling, I would have canceled the trip. But it wasn't a gut feeling, and it was more so a series of omens and very suspicious things that I was like, fuck, I should cancel this trip, but it was too late. So the day that I was supposed to leave home, packed up all my bags, did all of that, um, literally was going back and forth with myself. Should I say, should I go? Should I, mm. But I was like, no, let's just go. Maybe, you know, maybe you're just overthinking and nothing bad is going to happen. Maybe something really good is going to happen. Like that is always an option. Cause like maybe, you know, that is something that is a thing. And, um, and I should you not, my friend came to pick me up and I got my bag. I had two bags. They were quite light, but like they were just big. Cause like most like it was like shoes. So I had two bags and I went to pick up one of the bags and I just got my nails done a week ago and my nail broke and it wasn't the regular little nail break. No, it was the bloody nail break where the top of your nail, your actual nail, the nail snaps down, okay? Or up or whatever, but it cuts, it breaks your actual nail. It snaps your actual nail like a yummy little glow stick, okay? And that is what happened to me and blood came gushing out. And I looked at my friend because she's also very superstitious. We looked at each other and I was like, shit, this is an omen if I've ever seen one. Hmm. So she and I are in the car and she's driving me to the airport and we're talking and everything. And I look at her and I'm like, look, it's not too late. Like if I, if I cancel my flight, like we could just go to brunch. (laughs) we could just go to brunch like for real she had her baby with her I haven't seen the baby in so long I was like we could just have a girl's day like it's really not that big of a deal like and I'll save so much money by not going to New York like girl it's really not that big of a deal (sighs) we get to the airport I you know I go through TSA 
I also was like very concerned about my luggage because I've never lost luggage before, but I was very scared that I would lose luggage this time because I had like important outfits because my merchandise was in there and I needed to, I needed the merchandise for the photos. So I separated, I did like that thing that they do with important families, how like nobody in like the air to like Exxon when they go on a family trip, the whole family is not on the same flight, baby. They're taking like at least three separate private jets so that if, if one jet goes down, there's at least, uh, two thirds of the family left. So that's what I was doing with my clothing because I was not chancing it. So I, I was very concerned about my luggage, got through TSA, got my luggage on the flight got in my seat it was a full flight which I was slightly annoyed about because I knew I'm a fat bitch but it was a full flight and I was slightly annoyed about that <sighs> I kid you not we take off and with 30 seconds into the flight the overhead compartments the little windows or not windows but the little overhead compartment like the doors to the overhead compartment come down <sighs> a bunch of them open and it's I'm like fuck (laughs) I'm just like oh my god this is like a moment in final destination like where something is just it's just like something that's off like it's just off and and the over I'm staring at this one overhead compartment that's down and I'm like if I die well you know you know my thoughts on death are very different um than a lot of people I'm not really that scared to die I just hope I don't suffer but I'm just like if I die, like, it's not really going to be my problem. It's kind of going to be everybody else's problem. Like, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Like, I'm con- I'm pretty sure I'm not going to hell. So I'm like, you know, or like, whatever. I don't really know what comes after. But like, if there's a hell, I ain't going there. You know, I'm a, I'm a good girl. I'm a good girl. So I'm not really that concerned about that. Like, that wasn't really my concern. My concern was just like, damn, everybody else is just going to have to miss me if I go on this flight. <laughs> so sad for you guys. Not me. I don't care. Um, so I was just like, shit. So I'm looking at these, these, uh, these overhead compartments that are open and I'm just like, damn, if, so I do like a quick little prayer and I'm like, all right, God, like, you know, whatever. If, you know, if the flight goes down, like it's fuck it. But, um, you know, don't let nobody suffer, uh, and just kind of make the death instantaneous if you can. So I was just like, all right, cool. And then I laid back and then I watched, uh, (laughs) <laughs> House of Dragons for the rest of the flight. Obviously, I didn't die. So after that, I I get to uh, LaGuardia, which is such a nice airport, and it takes forever for the luggage to come out. Get my luggage, and then you know get to my friend's house. Whatever. Um, the first day and the next day were like fine, and I knew though that some fuckery was going to be happening. Because one of my friends, like, this is the person that I talked about before, but, like, I had, I used to have feelings for them. Now I don't really have feelings, well, yes, I do, that's a lie, I still have feelings for them. But those feelings only happen because, like, I misunderstand, like, what's going on sometimes. Like, I feel like the way they function, like, their brain is really, they're always thinking about an end goal, and I'm, they're very analytical, and I'm more so thinking with my feelings. Everything I do is with my feelings. If my feelings are not up to par for that day, I'm not doing this podcast. I'm so sorry, because I'm just so aware of my energy and my, and how I feel, and like, and how that rubs off on people and all of those things. I don't know if these are things that cross his mind ever, but he does a lot of things that honestly, like, give me mixed signals, and I've, I've always felt like mixed signals are very intentional on the part of the person giving mixed signals. But in this situation, I feel like the, like they're just unaware. Like, and I don't know if I'm just being too complimentary and too kind, um, which is something else that literally like by the end of this trip, I was like, bar none, at the end of the day, I am too kind. I'm too forgiving and I am too nice and I'm done. I feel like fighting. I feel like fighting. Um, I feel like arguing. I feel like throwing hands. I feel like punching. I feel like doing a lot of things that do not mean suppressing my emotion because I have just been suppressing my emotion for a long time and I want to express how I feel. If you've made me mad, I want you to know that you've made me mad. If you've made me sad, I want you to know that. And 
I'm just over suppressing my emotions for the sake of other people who have no interest in caring how the things that they do make me feel. That's it. So, um, yeah. So I don't, I, I kind of knew like some, like some fuckery was going to happen or he was going to be on some fuckery. And the reason why was because before I even left, like we were, cause I was going to have a, I was having a dinner for my birthday and I invited all of my really close friends that live up there. And, but I had Monday, I didn't have any plans for Monday. Like Monday was like my fully open day, like no plans whatsoever. And I had basically like allotted time to everybody and I was talking to him and I was like, I'm not doing anything Monday. Like, do you want to do something spooky ooky? And he was like, yeah, like we can do something spooky. And then he recommended doing something that was like really far, um, like a two hour train ride away. And I was just like, okay, do you understand that? Like, we're going to be stuck together this entire time. Like, are you okay with that? And when I got to, when I was in there the first day, that's what I said to him. And then mind you, my, okay. So that's what I said to him. That's what I said. And he literally goes, it was your idea. And I was like, no, it wasn't like, it wasn't, I said, I wanted to do something spooky. It wasn't my idea to go up like three fucking States away. Like that was on you. And then, like, started stuttering and all this shit. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, forget about it. We can just watch a movie. It's fine. So, I already knew, like, that was going to be a little tricky. um, Because the thing was, the last time I went to New York, they had very much kind of let me down emotionally. But they were in a place where I understood. I had a lot of empathy and I had a lot of sympathy. And I really understood why they couldn't be there for me because I I love a dinner you guys I'm so sorry I love a dinner so had a dinner couldn't show up and I was super understanding about it um so this time around I told them because they were not in the same situation I said to him I said hey if you don't show up to my dinner I'm never talking to you again and he said to me he was like the only reason why I wouldn't show up is if I was out of the country and I'm going to be in the country. So I was like, okay, good. Anyways, the dinner comes and one of my friends, she who's always early, she's like the first person there. And then, okay, another omen. When we call, we couldn't get a cab, couldn't get a ride, couldn't um, book a ride on any of the apps. So that was really frustrating. That was happening for like 10 minutes straight. Me and my friend that I was with, like we low-key started panicking because I was like, what the fuck? Like why? Like really in New York city, you cannot, I cannot get a lift. Like every lift, every Uber, every single one of those ride sharing apps canceling, canceling immediately. So this was happening like over and over and over. Not good. When we get in, when we finally get a ride sharing app this fucking driver drops us off like three blocks from our destination in the lower east side if you don't know anything about the lower east side all you need to know for the context of this story is that the sidewalks are slanted they are cobblestone and they are slanted if you're trying to walk in heels on the lower east side say goodbye to your fucking ankles because it's not happening so he, I'm wearing, mind you, seven inch platform boots. He drops us three blocks from our fucking destination because he says the road is fucking closed. The road is not fucking closed. He could have made a U-turn and gotten us literally right in front of the fucking door. I start getting so mad. I start getting so mad. And like, and the thing that's weird to me about this anger is that it is just, it's so warm, it's so warm and it's real and I know that it's not just because this dickhead is making me walk this far in these uncomfortable ass heels I know that is because of everything else is going to happen and this anger felt like when warm liquor hits an empty belly that's what that felt like and I just I just knew I just knew so 
get there, walk into, because, like, one side of the restaurant is a hotel and the other side is the restaurant. I walk in and this guy is trying to tell me, ooh, that's why that's itchy, because I got a piece of glitter there. Um, And this guy is trying to tell me that I'm, like, where, like, that I'm in the hotel side. I was like, dude, I don't give a fuck. I know how to get where I'm going. Like, no, please. Can you shut up? So I go and I sit down and, and like, my two homegirls are there. And I, at this point, at this point we are waiting for um four people because I invited the photographer to dinner but the photographer is my friend's friend so um they were coming together and I was waiting for my one of my girlfriends and then one of my other homeboys and I, my girlfriend, she texted me and she was like, she was having car trouble because this girl insists on renting a car. She just learned how to drive. And, (laughs) and like this obsession she has with cars and the way that she doesn't know how to use them. No offense, babe. But, um, she's always getting in some trouble regarding a car and it's actually kind of funny. So, but like I had spent so much time with her and like, she always shows up for me. So like, I wasn't really thinking about, like, there was any, like, heaviness to it, you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, so she texted in the group chat that she wasn't going to be able to come. And then I texted my homeboy, and I texted him, and I was like, where are you? And he was like, I'm just leaving. This is at, like, 1030. And he lives far. So I'm like, all right, you're not going to show up. And so it didn't show up. And like, it upset me like real bad because he was, for some reason, he was under the assumption that we were all going to go out afterwards. But I was like, one, I didn't stay. I didn't promise that. I just asked if there was anything going on afterwards. But also like, that wasn't my focus. My focus was the dinner. Because I love to have a dinner with everybody that I love around me. So that was, you know, that was my focus. That was my concern. Um, And I don't know. I also had like six martinis. But by the time that, let me fix this. But by the time that like, you know, he finally made it into the city at 12 o'clock at night it was 9 30 when my dinner was supposed to happen at 12 o'clock at night I was just so angry like I was just so angry and I was so upset and like I have the kind of personality I've realized that it's never just one thing everything my emotions kind of treat everything like an avalanche so you know when somebody disappoints me like that it just makes me feel like it just makes me feel like I don't matter. It just makes me feel like I'm not a priority in their life and that they're a priority in mine. And then that ends up making me feeling that makes me feel so fucking embarrassed because I'm like, damn, I look like a fucking fool. Like here I am. And I hold you to such a high standard and like, you don't even give a shit about what I've got going on. Like you don't even care to show up for me on time. And like, I would make the effort and I do make the effort every time. So it's just, like, it's embarrassing. And, like, and there was, it was really, I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like any other time I wouldn't have felt so sensitive about this. But I was also drunk. And I I just felt like I already didn't want to be there. And it was just, like, proving to me everything that I thought. Like, I think deep down inside, like, I just knew that, like, he wasn't going to show up for me in that way that I wanted him to. And that really upset me. Um... And also, like, there's something really embarrassing about having, like, a table for, like, eight set for you and there's only three people there. Um, that was very humbling. I won't lie to you. That was very humbling. Um, so, yeah. So, he had shown up for me in that trip in other ways where he'd planned, like, uh, I mean, he didn't, he got one of his friends to shoot me for the merchandise, which was really great. But, um, but I don't know, that wasn't really my concern because I had a photographer on backup anyways. And if it came down to it, I could have shot myself. Um, that wasn't really what was like important to me on this trip. Like it was a priority for sure, but emotionally, like it wasn't what was important for me. And 
I don't know, man. It just fucking hurt. It just really hurt because it was like the second time he done it. And then to make matters worse, <laughs> to make matters worse, like he did it like three more times um, after that, like planning stuff and then not following through and then planning again and then not following through. And just there was like just no follow through. And I was just like, bro, like, what the fuck is this? This is like such a waste of time. I was like, I want to go home. Like, I want to go home. Like, on a friendship level, forget my fucking crush. On a friendship level, this is like shitty friendship behavior. And like, mind you, like, I just told him about, like, I had a friendship breakup recently where like, I had never told him that that was something that happened in that friendship. And it, and it was just the same thing, repeating itself. And then like, oh my god and then him trying to convince me that I was not I had no reason to be upset because it's just how he is and everybody around him is akin to that and fine with that and I was like but I'm not I was like I'm so sorry I need to be babysat I I am the gentle little creature like and I still muster up some courage and a little bit of bone broth to you know, do things I don't want to do for the people that I care about. It was just like so ugly. And like, I just hated it. And I really did hate it. And like, it hurt. And I cried. I cried a lot. I was crying a lot. I don't know why it was like a lot of crying, but I was crying a lot. Um, and then the, the, the real New Yorker part of this story is a, a New York dream. The only thing the story is missing is a rat like <laughs> I'm so serious the only part of this the only thing that this story is missing is a rat carrying a slice of pizza because there was a fight on the cobblestone streets of Soho in a very good outfit my outfit like because we got into an argument like he was trying to explain himself and I was not happy I was like I don't care I was like I don't have any room for empathy or sympathy for you right now my outfit ate that day that was really good my outfit ate and so did my makeup okay and his outfit was good too um but that night of the dinner crying upset because that's just me and all of my feelings and emotions and my frustrations towards myself because I just like it's just everything it's everything like I'm so over it is everything so um crying on the street iconic iconic a beautiful girl in a beautiful outfit with beautiful makeup on crying on the streets of New York okay and then some fucking little hipster coming up to her and being like do you want to buy some heroin because he thinks he's funny he's not the farthest thing from fucking funny so I tell him get the fuck out of my face and he's like it was a jo- get the fuck out of my fucking face He's like, why are you being rude? It's a joke. I started screaming. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face. Get the fuck out of my face. (laughs) I blacked. Like, I really blacked. Like, I blacked out. I just remember, like, my blood pressure, like, shooting. And then a a lot of yelling because I can hear myself. And you know how I sound when I'm drunk. And I literally was telling him, I was like, get the fuck out of my face, get the fuck out of my face. And then his little friend, his little friend came over and he was like, you fat bitch, which I was like, buddy, you're the one who approached the fat bitch. You are not a, you can call me a fat bitch all you want, but you approach this fat bitch. And then she got, she got a little spicy. She a little rejected you. And now you want to call her a fat bitch? Buddy, you was trying to get to this fat bitch. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? He was like, I was just trying to be nice, you fat bitch. I was like, you was the one trying to get at this fat bitch. So fuck you, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> just losing it. Like, really. Like, this is what was happening, okay? And they started running away because I think, like, they got really scared. I think they thought that I was not going to retaliate. And I was like, oh, but little do you know I have so much anger to get out at this very moment. And honestly, if you wanted to tussle, we could have tussled. For real. I don't even have to take the shoes off because at that point I was so angry I couldn't feel my feet. So they were like, it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. And, like, people were looking and shit. And I was like, get the fuck out of my face. And, like, and I still was crying. And it was just so iconic on my end, okay? 
listen, we are human. We have rage. I don't, I, I cannot, I don't care. Uh, Sorry for the verb. I don't care how I looked at that moment. I was, you instigated this. (laughs) Why do I have to be the one that's calm? when somebody is instigating me why do I have to be calm why do I have to be the bigger person I don't care if I am fat I will be the smaller person I there was an inner child in me that needs healing by you know emotional terms I am the smaller person and I'm gonna act like it because why would you instigate me You come at me with no fucking rhyme or reason, just a whole lot of attitude and a fucking sense of humor that you think is amazing. And I'm supposed to go along with that. No, bitch, I'm fighting you. So don't. (sighs) Anyways, left, finally got a cab, went home. The absolute cherry on top of this night is... (laughs) My friend saying, literally grabs my hand lovingly. And she's like, babe, at least we have cake. And we get home and this cake tastes like trash. It's dry, flavorless. The icing just tastes like straight up vegetable shortening. Okay? straight up vegetable shortening to the point where we were like is this meant to be eaten because why does this taste like this (sighs) wake up in the middle of the night diarrhea my friend is throwing her guts up (sighs) okay The next day, um, I go to brunch with a fellow TikToker. Well, she's more than a TikToker. She's, she is a Renaissance woman. Um, Blake Newby, if you don't follow her, you should follow her. She's really funny. And she talks about a lot of really cool things, um, regarding like the editorial industry and like beauty and hair and all of that. Um, so she and I had brunch together and the food was really good. We walked around Soho, went in and out of a couple stores and then... (laughs) <laughs> bro like sorry I smacked the fuck out of this thing just listen to this story and then as we're walking on Soho I see a sign I see a sign and it says um Soho Psychic and y'all know I love a psychic bitch y'all know I love a psychic so I'm like oh I was like do you want to go see a psychic and she was like um I'm scared, but yeah, so we go see the psychic, first of all, this lady, she lives in a really nice apartment, let's get that out of the way, but when you first open the door, like, to walk into the building, I've never seen so many stairs in my life, I've never seen so many stairs in my life, like, just imagine, like, looking up, and, like, from down here to all the way to, like, where you can't even make out if it's a flat surface, stairs, stairs, like, I think it was, like, four levels of, like, really long stairs, I was, like, shit, like, I was, like, what, and I was, like, watch, just my luck, this bitch would be at the very top, and then I get in there, and I'm huffing, I'm puffing, and my wig is sliding off, no, that didn't happen, but, um, she was on the first level, so we go in there, her place is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous I'm laughing because I know what I'm about to tell y'all so her place is gorgeous and we go in there and she's having a special you know a bitch love a special anything to save girl because I was running through money like crazy on this trip because these New York Ubers is not a fucking joke y'all need to get that shit shit figured out because why am I paying $90 just to go two miles that shit is brazy to me like it's actually crazy to me like I cannot it's not clicking, like, it's not clicking, it's not making sense, you know, so, anyways, so, go in there, and, um, you get to ask three questions, all right, so, of course, my first question is, uh, what does my love life look like in three months, because, mind you, we talked about this before, my other lady said that I was already supposed to meet my lover, does Divine have a lover, no, she don't got no lover, She's 28, 27, sorry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm rounding up. She's 27. 
no prospects no suitors I will not say I'm a burden to my parents but I think I may be a nuisance (laughs) and I'm just lonely so I feel not to get off track but I'm really feeling like it's time to give up and I just yeah so um I asked her about what my love life looks like in three months and the funny thing was Blake's concern was that she was gonna go in there and the psychic was gonna be like yeah man is dead eh. <laughs> or like some shit like you know you ain't ever gonna find nobody some shit like that which honestly is always my concern but I feel like if I actually did like if that ever happened if I if there was some all wise knowing person and they were able to tell me if my soulmate was dead or not I think I would actually want to know. I think I'd want to know because it would just give me so much peace knowing that all of these years that like that I've been feeling like this, that my feelings have been validated, that there really is nobody for me on this planet. And that would really make me feel, you know, that would make me feel a lot better than how I feel now than like this endless seeking. Like I'm getting so off track, but I don't care. This endless seeking and like that endless seeking is very painful and I hate it and I'm sick of it. Okay. Um, literally today, so today is my birthday, so obviously all of my family members are calling me and, like, telling me their well wishes and shit. Yeah, all of the well wishes last year were about, I hope you have success, I hope, you know, all of your endeavors work out and you have a great year and you're successful is success, success, success. This year, everybody's calling me and wishing me happy birthday and very, like, nervously telling me, I hope, and honestly, I don't think they're believing themselves, very nervously telling me that they hope that God sends me, they're praying for me, that they're, they're praying that God sends me a loving, kind man, and I am just having to stop myself so bad from saying God doesn't give a shit and y'all are clogging up the prayer lines because there are hungry children in Africa okay there are hungry children in the streets of Atlanta and y'all want to call God talking about can you find divine a man he don't give a fuck about me I'm at the bottom of his priorities okay he is more concerned that I have a roof over my head and I have food in my belly, okay? I don't, I really genuinely don't feel like God is concerned about my emotional well-being because I feel like if that was the case, he would have threw me a bone years ago and that's just not happened. And not to start off my 27th year bitter about my love life, but this is just where we are <laughs> because it's just, it's so, I'm just like, damn, if he's dead, just say it. If he, if I, if you just forgot, if you just forgot when you were mixing me, when you were doing the Powerpuff Girl mix, if you just forgot to add the soulmate ingredient, girl, just send me a sign. Knock the ring light over. Cut my mic. Cut the cameras. Do one of them. Because I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, And I I think the fucking shitty truth is that not everybody deserves love essentially. Maybe that's it. Is that is that terrible to say? Like maybe in my past life, like I was maybe I was like fucking horrible in my past life. Like given Hitler esque. And I'm and I'm 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 paying for it in this life by you know, apparently helping a lot of people, but not getting any of these emotions in return. I ask that all the time. Like, fuck, am I going to start crying? Maybe I don't give a fuck. If I start crying too bad, is it really your birthday if you don't cry? No. <laughs> like that shit really bothers me because I go through my whole life and I'm, I'm so kind and I'm not saying that like it's a chip on my shoulder or anything. It's just like I love being nice and I'm not doing it for anybody else. I'm really doing it because that shit brings me so much fucking joy. Like I love animals. I love dogs. I love cats. I love all of them. Do you ever hear about a bitch being a cat and a dog person? No, you don't. But now you do because it's divine. I love kids. Like I understand people. Like I care. And like I just have like, ooh. Mm, she's about to start crying but this is just a part of the reality of it all the camera actually cut right when I started crying and I think that was a sign from God to stop being emotion so (sighs) 
it's just annoying. It just really is annoying. And I feel like I, I'm just, you know, she's just not going to get what she wants. <laughs> Period. Um, yeah. So. That was that. I, my first question is, what does my love life look like in three months? She tells me that, um, she doesn't tell me in three months. She basically tells me that I've already met my soulmate apparently and that we are not spiritually connected. We're not spiritually connected at all. And I'm not surprised by that because I'm literally sitting here thinking about every man I know. And I'm like, are any of y'all like, do I feel the deep connection that I feel like with my girlfriends that like really are the loves of my life do I feel that with any of you men no she told me that we were physically connected and like we've been in the same place at the same time and emotionally connected where we feel a deep connection but spiritually it's just not happening and I I didn't I was just like yeah no I believe it I don't feel spiritually connected to any of these dudes like a lot of the times like when I'm dealing with the men that I know, even on like a friendship level, I just feel like there's so much vacancy and I don't know how to, I don't know how to express like that deep. And you know, like when you have those friends, you look at them and you, you see me, I see you, you know, what's going on. I don't feel that with any of like my male friends or like any of the straight men that I know. And I mean, there is, there's one, but like, no he's dead to me at this point but that's the only person that I've ever felt like spiritually connected with but clearly he's not my soulmate because she said that I'm not spiritually connected with them so um so yeah and then my second question to her was uh will I ever get married and have children she (laughs) lied fuck I just said she lied to me (laughs) I'm so sorry y'all see where my head is at she said to me, um, I won't know if it's a lie until it, until I die, but she said to me that I have one marriage and that we are married for a long time and that we have two children together and that we have a boy and a girl. And she also tells me that I have the spirit of a young child around me. And I was really confused by that because I was like, I it confused me because when I was in college, I, it wasn't like, you know, you read about miscarriages or whatever. I think, and I say, I think because like, I just think like it was, I don't know, a blood clot came out of me and it, and it was kind of giving like, is this some, am I, did I just miscarry? Like what happened? Cause it just was very abnormal to like my, my situation. Um, but I don't think that that would have been that at all. And I've never had an abortion. So, um, and as far as I know, I don't know anybody else who's miscarried. Um, well, I know a few people, but like not close to me where like the spirit of their child would be hanging out around me. Anyways. Um, so she told me that and she said that it didn't even have to be my child, but that there was just a spirit of a child around me. And that was confusing because I was like asking myself like what child like do I know a child that died do I feel like I probably do I just can't remember because I don't remember a lot and I was like it might have been my friend who you know she passed away when she was young but you know she was a teenager and and she seems like she's talking about a child like a baby or that's how it resonated to me anyways and but I, I didn't, I'm not sure what that was about, but I wasn't really surprised hearing that weirdly enough because I am so, I am so pulled towards children. There is this like, there is this like, and like, I just feel so protective of every child that I see. And like, I just love children so much and I love babies and I love them. Like, even when they're annoying, like even when they're driving me crazy, like I love these babies, like so bad and I really want one right now but that's whatever um so she told me that and then the last thing I asked her was about my career and this is why I didn't this is why like certain things like when you when you see somebody like that you always ask yourself like if they're a fraud and 
this one was the reason why I kind of knew she wasn't a fraud was, you know, I kind of knew she wasn't a fraud because she basically was like, you've been, she was like, you need to move to the place you don't want to move to make your career like really go where you need it to go. And she also told me that I don't actually need anybody to help my career move forward, that the things that I've been doing by myself are what is helping me get the opportunities that I'm getting that, you know, whether there's somebody there or not, um, I'm still going to be fine, which was something that I was thinking about, um, which was something that I had been thinking about. Uh, but then, you know, she did Blake's reading and that was like a whole thing, girl. But then, <laughs> but then afterwards, I'm like sitting at a bar, um, waiting for somebody and I start Googling her. She apparently was about to have a TV show on, uh, Bravo that got canceled because she ended up getting sued or I'm sorry, she didn't get sued. She got arrested. She got arrested because apparently, and I did not know this, but fortune telling is a crime in New York. Um, but she ended up getting arrested because she conned a lady out of $12,000. Yes. 12 saccharoonies. So very concerning. Um, and the way she did it was she told this lady that apparently there was the reason why she could not fulfill her success was because somebody had put a curse on her years ago in ancient Egypt, like 10,000 years ago, and it's carried on with her now. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> needless to say... I was like, I don't know if I believe you, but I do kind of believe her because I'm also like, I don't expect everybody to use their powers for good. You know what I'm saying? It's some bad witches out here trying to put curses on people for money. So, um, and trying to do love spells and shit, which don't ever do a love spell on nobody. Okay. Don't ever do a love spell on nobody. Um, my mom always tells me the story about how when she was growing up in Haiti, there was a lady whose husband like he was just so distant from the relationship and as she grew older basically her family ended up telling her that this lady the way she put a spell on her husband her husband had no idea but the day after the wedding he woke up and this woman was his wife and it was like a whole thing because he was like i am not married to this lady he was like i did not have a wedding i don't know who the fuck this lady is none of it but basically, the husband was basically like a, a zombie in this relationship. So, if somebody doesn't love you, don't put a spell on them. That's not, don't do that. That's bad. And I feel like karmically, that's just terrible. So, um, so yeah. So, this lady was a bit of a little con lady, allegedly. Not allegedly, but alleg uh, allegedly. <laughs> For legality reasons. Um, and I read those articles and I was just like, damn, fuck. But... Um, later on that night, I, I was on Instagram and, um, and I was just, you know, not minding my business and my reader did a card pull for me and she basically told me that if I've been feeling like there's somebody that I need to let go because I keep giving them chances to show up for me and they don't, that I should. So, yeah, um, yeah, it just, I don't know, I think this will probably be the last birthday that, like, I really do a celebration of, um, when things like this happen, it just makes me feel not being, like, not being social, and it makes me feel, like, isolating, and it just hurts, like, it just hurts for no reason, like, like, this is somebody that I've been friends with for a long time. And, like, and I feel like I've ended friendships for less. And I just, I just, I have to be fair to myself. I have to be fair to myself. You know, I've talked to my therapist about showing up for people and people showing up for me. And one of the things that she talked about was, 
you know, sometimes people can't show up for you the way that you want them to show up. And I understand that. And I really do understand that. Um, Because, you know, people's love languages are different. They show their love in different ways. But I also think it's different if you're telling me that you're going to be somewhere and you know how much it means to me and you keep overestimating your own ability to be there for me. And, And I'm a very... You know, to me, physical and emotional are a straight line. We've talked about this. So when I see you, I feel like you've taken this time out of your day to be here with me. And that's really important to me. And I know that's not the same for everybody, but that's just what matters to me. And I've made that known. And I'm assuming that, um, wait, hold on. The last thing that I want to tell you. The last story I'm going to tell you about this trip and then we're going to wrap it up. So on my way home, and I think this was really the cherry on top of everything. This was the last thing that happened to me in connection with this trip and just a nice little neat way to pack this whole situation up. Okay. On my way home at the airport, this man comes up to me. He tells me that he likes my nails. At first I'm thinking like maybe he's like, you know, but then he tells me like I'm so beautiful and then I'm like, oh, never mind not you know so because he's not my type you know so uh then like I see he's very much hovering he's very much hovering and I'm just like no so I make way and I get on my flight and it's like where you can sit wherever no assigned seating and um I sit all the way in the back in a nice little tucked in corner because I don't want anybody sitting next to me. He comes and sits next to me. Put my headphones in because I don't want to talk to you, you know? He asked me, he's like, are you from Atlanta or are you from New York? I'm like, I'm from Atlanta. And he's like, oh, I'm from New York. I'm just like visiting Atlanta. And I'm like, oh, that's so nice. Headphones back on. And then he taps me on the shoulder and he's like, wow, you really beautiful. You know that? I was like, I do. And then he was like, oh, you must hear that all the time. And I was like, I do. And then he was like, <laughs> that's so funny. And then he goes, um, and then this is the thing that really got me because he goes, he goes, do you have a man? And I said, yes, I do. And then he goes, well, I hope they treat you well or a nice guy like me could come and swoop you up. That's a really long sentence. And what happened within that sentence was his breath was so rank. And he just had the worst, his breath smelled like tonsil stones. And I don't know if you know what tonsil stones are, but it's when like food gets trapped in your tonsils and it forms this tiny little white stone. And like when you smush it, it literally smells like shit. I think these things smell worse than shit, to be honest. His breath smells like that. When I tell you that shit slapped me across the fucking face, like right across, I couldn't hear it. I was blind. I was blind and I went deaf. I couldn't hear anything he said. Like I literally couldn't see in front of me. And I was just like, and then like the real brave man that he is, he asks me to dinner after I tell him that I'm with somebody. He asked me to dinner. I say, no, thank you. During the flight, I can just feel him like staring at me. But worst of all, I can smell him. And it's to the point that during this entire flight, I have to cover my fucking face with my sweatshirt. And I was just like, wow, this trip, I should have just stayed my ass at home. <laughs> like I should have really just stayed my ass at home. From the, For the fact that this trip began with a bloody broken nail and ended with me literally being assaulted every waking moment of that flight by this man's breath, I should have stayed my ass at home. Okay, I should have stayed my ass at home. Not to make things worse, but this morning I woke up and my fucking, all of my charges cleared and my account was in the red. I was like, bitch, <laughs> what's going on so my shit was in the red and I was just like if I had canceled my flight this would have been a whole lot cheaper than this whole shenanigans like to be honest 
but it was just like annoying and like and I got in the cab and I was just sitting there and I was like if I'm a fucking joke just say that bro like like dead ass like god if you are listening if I'm a joke like just let me know right now because I've already gone like a slick 16 I'm you know 16 I'm not 20 I'm not 32 you're joking I've gone like a nice solid like what you start dating when you're like 15 I'm like 28 that's eh, 13 I've gone a nice 13 years of just like embarrassment of rejection of like slaps across the face of feeling unwanted of feeling unneeded of feeling disposable of feeling like unnecessary and unloved and I'm just like bro if this is a gag can I just be in on the joke like really let's just let me in on the joke because I think it'll just be easier to deal with so I'm just over it. I'm over it. I think, I think, but you know, I've been in therapy for long enough that I can't just leave things that I'm just over it. I have to remedy things myself and I obviously have no control over these things. So, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mood board for all of the emotions that I would like to feel just once before I fucking die. And I'm going to, make it and then I'm gonna put it somewhere and never look at it again and hopefully I can I don't know it just sucks it really hurts like it all hurts but I do feel very grateful for the friends that were there for me who you know showed up when they said that they would and that meant a lot and um and also didn't try to fucking gaslight me about how I was feeling (laughs) so um yeah I don't know to better days, I guess. Um, I look cute, though. That's a good thing. You know, shit might feel really fucking shitty. And I and I might feel like not existing sometimes. But I will always have the mirror to tell me that I'm gorgeous. And, you know, sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes all you need is to feel hot to get through life. And that's the point that I'm at now. Because if I think about it, I'll cry. So I don't think. I look in the mirror and I feel grateful that if I have anything in this life, it's self-love and appreciation for beauty that's it so yeah so sorry if that episode was depressing this is just how I'm feeling but um yeah it was a lot but anyways if you're watching on YouTube make sure you follow and subscribe and if you're watching on YouTube do me a favor and share this video with two people right now right now share this video with two people and I will really appreciate it it helps a lot when you guys share um because it lets YouTube know that you're enjoying the content and that you feel the need to propel it forward and that they might feel the need to do the same thing too um if you're listening on Apple Podcast wow if you're listening on Apple Podcast go ahead and leave a rating and review um if you're listening on Spotify leave a rating if you're listening whatever you're listening on just leave a rating you know and if you enjoyed this episode, if you felt like I said something that was relatable or or something that, you know, a friend might relate to, go ahead and send it to them. Share it with them and, you know, share it on Instagram. Let the world know about my suffering, our suffering, our collective suffering. Um, but yeah, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at VineFilo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. And on uh, TikTok at Dphile, D P H I L E, and on Twitter at Vinephilo, V I N E P H I L O. I love you so much. Here's to better days, better weeks, better months, better years, better decades, better lifetimes. Okay? I love you so much. Bye. <laughs>